Yeah, again, as we mentioned in the pregame, Carney has uh, has not lost to this bunch in uh, 21 years, and uh, or Wayne State that is aims to change that around today, and they have the talent to do it. Wayne State with a victory of sorts already. They won the toss. They deferred their choice until the second half. Carney will receive and back deep to receive the kickoff for the Lopers. It's 24 Scott Franson and number 29 Butch Peltz. Peltz, by the way, a linebacker. You don't see that very often in a, in a kickoff return team with a linebacker returning kicks, but that is indeed what we have. Teeing it up for the Wayne State Wildcats is number 11, Brett Getman. And we're underway from Foster Field, and the kick is coming to the linebacker, Butch Peltz, at the nine. And the Wildcats swarm him over just across the 15-yard line, so tough field position for UNK to start off this ball game. Offensively, for the Lopers, they'll line up this way. Ken Terry, the senior quarterback. E.J. Hancock is the fullback. Mark Uly, an outstanding tailback. Russell Wattenpah and McCoy, the receivers. Along the front line, it's a big one. Jamie White Eagle, over 300 pounds. Chad Vokun, Corey Williams, the center. He's tenacious. Larry Cardenas and Todd Peters. First down and 10 for the Lopers. The ball at their own 16-yard line. Five seconds into this one. Terry is the quarterback. He leads this offense well. But he's had some problems in terms of accuracy and has made some mistakes, and he has quite a few interceptions this year. This is Yuli, the tailback, trying to cut around the outside. It'll be knocked out of bounds after a short game. Tackle made by Jerome Watts, the left cornerback. Defensively for the Wildcats, they'll line it up this way. The nation's number three defense in Division II. Scott Eisenhower at the defensive end. Adam East Young is the nose tackle, and Brad Otis, an NFL prospect, is the tackle. Bill Federson, John Atkinson, Jason McIntyre, and Robert McConico form a four-man tough linebacking core. In the secondary, Watts, Hookfin, Francisco, and Mueller. Second down play, they give it to the tailback, Yuli again. This time he finds up the middle and picks up short yardage. It'll be third down and call it six yards for the Lopers. Brad Otis, the defensive tackle, made the stop. Bill, you mentioned Hookfin, William Hookfin, or Wilson Hookfin, that is, 6'2", 180 out of New Orleans. All-American potential. This kid is a preseason All-Nebraska candidate and is really leading this team. He's number 27. Keep your eye on uh, Mr. Hookfin. Ken Terry, the Loper quarterback, make a third down and three, a gain of three yards on the last carry for Yuley. And the Lopers in the spread. Terry drops straight back. They try to work the screen, and it's off Yuley's hands, incomplete. The Lopers will be forced to punt the football. Good job by number 40 that time. John Atkinson coming up from his linebacker spot, putting uh, the pressure on. You see it here. Terry is going to try to dump it off to Yuley, and there's Atkinson right there to make the play. And whether or not Yuley had, uh, had some ears and heard the steps, we won't know that, but the ball was overthrown. Casey Anderson comes in, number 98. He'll punt for UNK. He's a good one. 27 punts on the year, averaging just over 41 yards a contest. He has been one of the bright spots and most consistent bright spots for this Loper ball club. Jerry Garrett is the usual punt returner for the Wildcats, but he is being disciplined early on in this one and back deep to receive the punt is Sean Francisco, and he takes it his own 32, retreats, can't pick up a block, and finally got back to the 32, and that's where the Wildcats will set up shop. You talked about Garrett, uh, Bill. He is number one rated in the country in punt returns, averaging 22, a little over 22 yards. Wayne State will set up shop with Brett Salisbury, the quarterback. He's a great one. Lamont Rainey, the lone tailback. They go with four wideouts, Thomas, Garrett, Santos, and Chamberlain. Along that front line, Gus Zambrano, Mark Christensen, Michael Verzani, O.B. Onajiogu and Brian Thompson along the offensive front. Wayne State will start with four wide receivers, but often they'll put five men in the pattern as they do here on first down from their own 31. Salisbury, he's been around a long time. Quick out to Byron Chamberlain, the transfer from the University of Missouri, and he makes things happen on the first play, knocked out of bounds in UNK territory. Byron Chamberlain finally knocked out of bounds by Matt Wibbles. Chamberlain at 6'3", 215 pounds. He's a junior. He was an all Big 8 player as a freshman for the Tigers and then transferred. Watch, watch the Wayne. block here by number 18, Dave Menser. It's going to let uh, Chamberlain pick up another five to seven yards. The block right there. And then uh, Chamberlain takes it on down. Chamberlain drawing a lot of attention from professional scouts. First down and 10 at the UNK 45. Rainey is the setback. Chamberlain in motion. Salisbury slipped as he threw it, but completes the pass to number 83, Damon Thomas. And with that reception, Thomas 
ties Marlon Goolsby for the Wayne State record in career receptions. The UNK defense lines up this way. Mike Irwin at defensive end, Brent Berkacek, the defensive tackle, along with Garrett Estes, Dan Fox at defensive end. The linebackers, Peltz, Chapel, and Washington. And in the secondary, Jonas Ginther, Victor Davis, Matt Wibbles, and Chad Misek. Watch Matt Wibbles. He'll be in on a lot of plays. He already has a tackle on this one. Second down and seven. They give it to the tailback, Lamont Rainey up the middle, and has little room to run. There you see number five, Lamont Rainey, born in Hanau, Germany. His folks in the military. He was an all-European uh, performer for a couple of years. Came over here, and uh, he's getting it done for Wayne State. It's a long way to come. Play football. <laughs> he's a terrific student, a presidential scholar, dean's list honoree. Looks to go into pre-law when his playing days are done. Third down and three from the UNK 38. Coming up on the 12-minute mark here in the first quarter. Chamberlain on the, on the reverse, got by Peltz. We have a flag on the play, and Chamberlain has no room to run. Met by a whole group of blue jerseys. Butch Peltz came in from that outside linebacker spot and really laid a lick on the quarterback, Brett Salisbury, talking to Claire Boroff yesterday along with Terry Renner. The Loper defensive coordinator. That's one thing they wanted to do more of in this game was attack from the outside. And again, the penalty flag on the play. Take See a look it again at the if hit. we can pick it up right here, Bill. See if, what that penalty was. Well, there was the, the decimation of the quarterback, but not sure what it was. Uh, they're talking to Carney uh, right now. That's Dan Fox, number 69, the trying senior get, from North Loop, Scotia. Trying to get some instruction from the bench. See what they're going to do. The referees today, Doug Martin is the ref, Jim Martin. The umpire, the linemen, Mark Obermeyer, Tom Millsap, Tim Thompson, and Jack Thompson. Holding penalty on the Wildcats, it's declined. It was a third down play. Chamberlain did not get enough for the first down. The Lopers declined the penalty, and you don't want to give Brett Salisbury and company too, much, too many opportunities to get that offense in gear. The Wildcats will be forced to punt. Byron Chamberlain is one of three punters that the Wildcats have used so far this year. Fourth down and three from the Loper 38, Matt Wibble standing at his 10. A high spiraling, spiraling kick that goes into the end zone. It'll be first down and 10 from the UNK 20 for Ken Terry and company as they get their second crack on offense. Bill, good job uh, to start the ball game out here, both by Wayne State and uh, Carney as far as defense goes. Uh, both defenses up to the task here in the initial stages doing a good job to shut down uh, the uh, Carney doing a good job to shut down the high powered Wayne offense there you see Claire Boroff he's got his play chart there ready to go and uh, he, he says hey we got to do some things uh, to spread out this Wayne State defense and they'll work out at the spread and hand it off to Yuli again trying to work to the outside Yuli's a slashing runner over 100 yards in the first two games of 93, including a 177-yard out, uh, outing against UNO. The tackle on that last play made by Jerome Watts. Mark Uli is a senior from Tampa, Florida. They had high hopes for him in the 1992 season, but on the very first or in the very first quarter of the 92 season against Augustana, he went down with a knee injury, and that sidelined him for the rest of the year. But he's come back to 100 percent, which is good. He's got 437 speed in the 40. Second down and five. Look Terry out. on the rollout, nearly intercepted. Wilson Hookfin, number 27, nearly had the pick and nearly had six. He was there to make the play, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, this young man has been a real positive force in the Wayne State defense. Uh, Going to see a little bit of an out pattern here that Hookfin just about catches up to from the defensive side. And if he does, obviously, it's a touchdown, but not able to hold on to it. Hookfin's got three interceptions already. In 93, third down and five. The ball at the UNK 25. Again on the spread. Terry with a quick drop. And the pocket collapses and UNK's line gives way. Sack number 24 of the year for the Wayne State defense. Scott Eisenhower, the defensive end, dropping Terry for a loss. A little bit of a collapse up front uh, on the offensive line, and then it's going to be finished off. I think Atkinson was in there also. Yeah, number 40 from Columbus. They call him the Axel, six foot, 215. Good pursuit there. Second sack of the year for Eisenhower. 
Fourth down and five. He lost a yard. The ball at the just outside the 24-yard line. Casey Anderson in the punt again. And Francisco back deep. And we've got movement along the line. I don't know if the clock went down also, Bill. The clock went down to zero there, and I'm not sure if it was movement or too much time. We'll see. It is a delay. We'll mark off five, and punter will be back close to the goal line now. And on a day like today where the hands are cold and uh, the wind's blowing pretty stiffly out of the north, to get a good snap is a real chore, so let's see what happens here. Anderson's a sophomore out of Kearney. Punting into the wind. This one's an end over end job that comes to Jerry Garrett. And he lets it bounce. Takes a UNK roll down to the 40. A good UNK roll, but a good, good field position once again for Wayne State. Tough to kick into that uh, brisk wind out of the north. Anderson trying to get it away, and the ball just got caught end over end, and Garrett not able to return, but. It's good fortunes for Carney because Garrett has just been masterful uh, this year as far as a return man again leading the nation in punt returns. Jerry Garrett has fulfilled his suspension. He's in the contest now split wide to the right side along with the other two. And they go immediately to Jerry Garrett on the quick in and put back to the for the reception and across the 50 into UNK territory once again finds his way across the 45. Garrett making a good uh, good grab and then good yardage after the grab. There you see number eight making his way back. Here's Brett Salisbury. Boy, what a performer he is. He's made his way here to Wayne. Uh, he was a highly touted recruit, first with BYU. Then he moved for a couple of years to Palomar Junior College. Spent a couple of years at Oregon, was a scout team quarterback last year. And then this year fulfilled all the expectations that had arisen with respect to himself and has led this team and led the nation in offense. Quick give up the middle to Lamont Rainey. He's got room to the outside and more to the 20-yard line before finally being knocked out of bounds by Wibbles and Misek. Well, that's what this Wayne State offense does. They soften you up with that pass and then come at you with two quality running backs, Lamont Rainey there. What, we'll see Jason Williams in the second quarter. What happens is that defense gets spread out looking for the pass all the time, Bill, and then here's what happens. You pop it up with Rainey, and then he shows good speed to the outside, and Misek's there to... Well, they got a little help, I guess. Who was that, number 10? Was that Ray Powers? No, couldn't have been Powers. First oh. down and 10 at the UNK 20-yard line, and the Wildcats are moving. Receivers split to both sides, Rain the lone setback, and Salisbury wants to throw again. Again, that quick little pass, Byron Chamberlain, with the reception. He gets the ball down to the 10-yard line near another first down. Bill, one of the things that's happening now is uh, Brett Salisbury is it's using the entire field, coming right, coming left, going over the middle. We'll see this little pop pass right over the middle, and then Chamberlain's going to do a good job to avoid a tackle there, pick up about three more yards, get the ball down uh, right close to the 10-yard line. Actually, about the 12. Again with four receivers. Second down play up the middle. Rainey down near the goal line. Is he in there? The Wildcats say he is. No signal from the officials yet. I think he was down about a yard short. And they will indeed spot the ball at the half yard line. Good hole right at the middle. They have a big line up front just as Cardi does and Rainey is just about a yard short. They also went on a very quick count, a very quick snap. <laughs> and the whistle yeah, stopped play before the snap of the football. And Carney may have called its first time out. And in fact, they have. So first down and goal for the Wayne State Wildcats inside the UNK one yard line. 9.08 remaining in the first quarter. It's a game of field position, and so far, Wayne State has won that battle, and they've made the most of it. Well, Bill, they've taken a short punt uh, and have made uh, good work out of the field with respect to that punt, taking it right down, combining the the running game, the passing game, and to put it right down to the one yard line, poised to, to take it in the end zone. They do it with the run, they do it with the pass, they do it every which way. 610 yards in total offense per game for the Wildcats. And Brett Salisbury on the year, 118 passes. There you see head coach Dennis Wagner 
Again he took a program five years ago that was 0 and 11 the year previous and really has turned things around here at Wayne State principally Brett Salisbury this year has been the main gun. He's attempted 164 passes on the year completed 118 of those for a 72 percent average quite phenomenal. First down and goal after the timeout. Rainey the tailback takes the handoff slips down he may have lost a yard. It's understandable that the field would be slick because all day yesterday here in Kearney was a, a slow drizzle that turned into a almost an icy drizzle last night. You mentioned the wind chill last night 10 degrees for the Kearney High Lincoln Northeast ball game. A little bit better though this afternoon well, a lot bit better this afternoon <laughs> but the bet. field the field is still a little slick and we saw it there. Second down and goal from the two. This is Rainey pulling his way to the goal line. He's in there. Touchdown. Lamont Rainey with his ninth touchdown of the year. Well, they're still debating it down there, but there's no real debate. The officials came no in question. with a signal. You bet. No question about it. He broke the plane of the goal line. Uh, the football was in the end zone. He got bent back afterwards. Here's a great shot right here. You're right in the action, fans. Look at the blocking up front there, and Rainey is over the goal line. There you see it right there. Good job. Well, his body never crossed, but the ball certainly did. He did a good job of being heads up and, and reaching out with, the, with that hand. Andy Parr is in to attempt the point after. He's made 31 on the year. And the kick is good. 7-0 Wayne State with 8.36 remaining in the first quarter. This offense that averages 53.4 points per game to lead the nation in that category gets off to a quick start against the Lopers here at homecoming here in Kearney, Nebraska. Bill, total offense, I think you mentioned they're number one in the nation, 610 yards. They lead in scoring offense, you just mentioned that, and passing offense also lead the nation in that at 404 yards. Jerry Garrett, their number one returner, also leads the nation in that category. We talked about that. And Brett Salisbury, number one in passing efficiency and also total offense. So I tell you what, it is an, indeed a, a spectacular showing, a spectacular uh, performance that these people from Wayne State have put on the, this year thus far. But as that man right there said earlier, Dennis Wagner said, hey, we've got five more games left to go and we need to get it done. And that's what he's aimed at doing. Dennis Wagner was an honorable mention All-America football player at the University of Utah. He played for Ron McBride, who was the offensive coordinator for the Utes at the time. McBride is now the head coach out there. Wagner joined the Wayne State staff after being an assistant coach at St. Cloud State. Back deep to receive the kickoff for the Lopers. Number 23, Jeff Sykes, a freshman from Lexington, and 24, Franza. And it's a short kick coming down to Sykes at the six. Right at the gut, down near the 30-yard line. He stopped short at the 27. And a good start to this drive for the Lopers. Good return by Sykes that time, uh, just through caution to the wind, so to speak, and blasted right up in there. Excellent return. Fairly decent field position to start here. Jeff Sykes on the year was scheduled a redshirt. In fact, he was redshirting until Dale Van Housen went down with a separated shoulder that will take him out of action for the entire 93 season. So Sykes has come in as the backup tailback to Mark Uly. And we did have a penalty do flag, it apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a penalty flag on the far sideline at the 35-yard line, which would indicate somebody may have been offsides on the kick team. And UNK wants to do it all again. They had pretty good field position. Sykes got the ball all the way out to the 28-yard line. They are indeed going to step it off five, as you saw the indication from the referee. Do the whole thing over here, and Sykes will get another chance. Let's see if they can improve the spot. Brett Getman will tee it up again. Freshman from Sarasota, Florida. Dennis Wagner brings him in from all over the country. Massachusetts, Wisconsin, Las Vegas, California, Texas. This is certainly a very, very much a national Wayne State team. Claire Boroff and company, well, they primarily rely on the kids from central Nebraska. They do have a few folks from outside the state, Californians, Iowans. But for the most part, this is a homegrown ball club. 
Getman will kick it off from the 30. And it's another short kick coming down to Sykes at the 10. Picks his way through the hole, and it turns out to be a two-yard gain on the penalty for the Lopers. It'll be first down and 10 from their own 30. Rupert Williams made the tackle on the kickoff, so Sykes does a good job on both efforts on the kick return. There he is again. And the field of football, Bill. That ball was dying fairly quickly, and he was able to get over there and make the grab and, uh, and then pick up good, good yardage and, as you mentioned, uh, improve uh, their spot by about two yards. So nice job by Sykes one more time. 8.22 remaining in the first quarter. Wayne State 7, Kearney nothing. UNK's third possession of the ball game. Terry on the misdirection, has his tight end. Jason Gibbs at the 35. Nice job of running out across the 45-yard line. Good tough running by the freshman from Ralston. Excellent grab to the ball, a little bit high, and he was able to come down with it. It was a bootleg play. Good, good action uh, on the fake by Terry. And then watch this here. He's going to hold the backers right there, and then the tight end's going to be crossing. And there he is right there, the ball coming right out of the old sun. And a good job by Gibbs to make the grab. And look at this run here. Good, tough run. Kept his balance, picked up a couple more yards. Nice work. Gain of 17, first and 10 from the 47. This is Jeff Sykes in the Wayne State territory. Jeff Sykes with his first carry of the ball game. Carney picking up a, just short of about 25 yards on two plays here. Here's the toss. Sykes up over the inside. And a little late hit there. I'm surprised a little warning was due uh, in that regard, but didn't see anything happen uh, from the referee. How about this Loper response to the touchdown? Coming right back, Bill. Ken Terry, the senior quarterback from Kozak. His second year as a starter. Second out and four, gain of six for Sykes. Again with the bootleg. He has nobody open. He'll have to keep it himself. The line to make is the 43-yard line, and it looks like he may be a yard short. There you see number seven, Ken Terry from Cozad, Nebraska, 6'1", 185. He's going to run the boot again. Looking downfield. Nobody there, so he decides to tuck and run. Boy, that's a great open field tackle by number 25, Sean Francisco. It's tough to do that, folks, and he did it the best you can. Third down and one. Big play early for the Loper offense. The ball at the Wayne State 45. Out of the eye. The sweeper with Sykes. He needs the 43, and he may have barely gotten it. Scott Eisenhower, the defensive end among those in traffic making the tackle. His forward progress did indeed pick up the first down. There go the sticks, so yes, indeed. They will move it, and right now, Carney's on a roll, doing a good job up front. Here's Sykes again, good tough run to the inside. Excellent pursuit by Wayne State there, but not until Sykes picks it up. How about that block by the fullback, Randy Carlock, number 44. Did a nice job. That was a slow developing play, and that was just one of those where you, whoever was tougher was going to win the battle. First and 10 from the Wayne State 43-yard line. Sykes again on the handout. Fights to the 40, but we've got penalty flags on the play. Sykes getting the bulk of the work on this drive right now. Mechanical went on the hit. Talking to number three, Bernie Mueller. And telling him what the Wildcats did wrong. Offside penalty against Wayne State. Looked like their tackle lined up uh, a little bit offside, and there you see number 96 for Wayne State, Brad Otis, and he is a horse for this ball club. I want to tell you, those pro scouts are here today looking at him and have been looking at him through the course of the year. Runs a 4-6-40, 6-5, 290. Looked like he lined up a little bit offside that time. Credit Sykes running through the tackle. Not many people can get away from Brad Otis. You mentioned the NFL scouts, Wilson Hookfin, Brett Salisbury, Brad Otis, among Otis, the players that they're all looking at. Otis has been the main attraction, and then, as you mentioned, Bill, those other fellows uh, also drawing some notes. Quick hand off to the fullback, E.J. Hancock, on a first down and five play. Tackle made by John Atkinson, number 40, and 49, Bill Federson. So far... Carney has been able to keep this uh, Wayne State 
defense off balance here. They've mixed up the running play, mixed up a couple of passing plays, and again, Bill, as you mentioned earlier, that's indeed the way to go about it, especially a, a tough and tenacious defense such as Wayne. You've got to keep them off balance, and that's what Claire Baroff and his staff uh, have done in this, uh, this series. Second down and a long two. They'll have to hurry. The play clock down to zero. They get it off in time. Sykes gets into open field across the 30. Sean Francisco over there one more time to make the hit. Fortunately for Wayne, he was there. Watch this hit right here. Francisco, good job. He got his head on the right side and uh, pulled the ball carrier down. Francisco out of Lincoln Southeast 59-190. And there you see Sykes. He's had some fun this series. He's carried the ball, what, about 10 times already? <laughs> Sykes is in his fourth game. He, he sat out those first two as the red shirt. How's Ben Housen went down. And since he's come into the lineup, Jeff Sykes averaging six and a half yards a carry. He picks up the first down, first and 10 from the 30. He's alone in the backfield. Terry again on the bootleg. Dumps it off to E.J. Hancock. And the Wildcats say it's been intercepted. So Sean Francisco there again. He's been a factor the last two plays and a big factor on that play. Somehow getting over down here in front of us in front of the Carney bench uh, to pick it off. Here's a ground level shot. Maybe be able to pick it up a little bit better here. You saw E.J. Hancock come out of the backfield number 20. Oh in the yeah. Ball thrown a little bit, a little under thrown there and Francisco will get a good shot of it here. Watch the ball is going to be a bit underthrown by Ken Terry and as we talked in pregame there the balls behind him and Francisco was there to make the play. That's the 13th pass interception that uh, Ken Terry has thrown this year. He needs to cut that down considerably. He had three in the first half last week against Fort Hayes. First down and 10 now for the Wayne State offense as they get into gear with a 7 0 lead. Salisbury over the middle for Chamberlain. He's rocked but he holds on to the football for the big game. Matt Wibbles there to make the hit, but he was able to hold on to it, and that guy's got some potential, I want to tell you. Byron Chamberlain, 6'3", 215. As you mentioned, Bill, a transfer from the University of Missouri where he made the all Big 8 freshman team. He went up in traffic. There it is right there. Four people gathered around, and he pulled it down. Nice work. First and 10 from the UNK 47. Wayne State in UNK territory once again. Lamont Rainey up the middle, takes a hit, keeps on going, picks up another first down, a big run for Lamont Rainey. And what it does, the passing game of Wayne really puts the pressure on the, uh, the Kearney defense. It spreads out the defense, creates a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations like you have right there. Number 27 for Kearney, Mark Hagedorn. He couldn't bring him down on that initial hit. It creates those one-on-one -on -one shots, and Dan Fox uh, finally brought the ball carrier down. Carney was moving the ball, the turnover gives it back to Wayne State, and they're doing what they do best. Salisbury, with all kinds of time, penalty flag on the play, completes it to Damon Thomas. And check that Jerry Garrett, number eight. But this may come back. From where the flag was thrown, obviously, you would think a holding uh, penalty would be in order. We shall see very shortly. Dan Fox, the defensive right end for UNK, may have been held on the play. Oh, all the re there's the indication bills we talked about holding all the receivers on the play the deep receivers well covered by the secondary Garrett coming underneath on the toss and uh, Salisbury their quarterback had all kinds of time back there that big line up front uh, giving him plenty of time to deliver the pass but it's all going to come back. There's Brett there Salisbury trying to find out just exactly what happened. <laughs> he said hey ref. I don't know about that one, but indeed it is. Here's Salisbury again. This guy's got some tools, as we said earlier. Sets up in there. Boy, what a great shot. What a great shot that was of Garrett catching the football. But, but it all bring goes it all back. back. First down and long now from the 49-yard line. Salisbury has a lot of good football blood in his uh, system. His brother, Sean. Played at USC and also is a backup now for the Minnesota Vikings. First down and 27. The penalty goes from the spot of the foul. 27 is not all that much for this offense. A probe in the middle to Byron Chamberlain. He's got room to run along the sidelines. Byron Chamberlain knocked out of bounds. 
What a thing of beauty that was. That young man right there turned in, turned a play that was really destined for failure into a big gainer, Matt Wibbles, on the hit. Watch Salisbury, middle of your screen. Things are all plugged up in there, and, and Chamberlain's able just to break loose. He was all tied up on the right side. We couldn't see that, but then he got loose and turned it into a big gainer. Good block. Didn't pick up who that was that made that block, but again, it let Chamberlain pick up another 5, 10 yards. Todd Price, the linebacker, was the one in charge of covering Byron Chamberlain. It was first and 27 to get all of it back. Now first and 10. This is Rainey up the middle, fighting for more yardage down to the 15-yard line. One of the things Carney needs to do, shore up to tackling, Mike Ir Irwin had a shot uh, at Rainey early in the backfield, but not able to bring him down as Mark Hagenone again on the tackle. Mark and uh, Rainey have uh, met up a couple times here today. Gain of six, second down and four from the UNK 16. Inside, three minutes to play in the first. Salisbury to the air. Chris Washington with the interception. Good read by number nine right there, Chris Washington. Chris, 6'2", 215, good size. Watch this play here. Two-step drop, Salisbury delivers, and he just read it. Chris Washington just read it perfectly. Picked it right up, and the ball indeed is going to go over. The pass was intended for 83, Damon Thomas, and there's a penalty flag on the play, indicated against Wayne State. The Lopers will decline and take over first down and 10, deep in their own territory at their own 15. But what a big turn of events. They had the, the ball moving. They've done a great job offensively. They turn it over themselves. Wayne State looks like it's marching back down for another score. And the defense comes up with a big play, getting the turnover with 2.48 to play in the first quarter. The Lopers have to feel good about the way they moved the ball that last possession. You can only hope now that they'll just keep that momentum, or they can only hope uh, they'll keep that momentum. Uh, a big spark on the pass interception. Oh, there's a big hit. Jeff Sykes hit in the backfield. Looks like Atkinson one more time uh, on the hit. It indeed was John Atkinson out of Columbus. In on a number of plays thus far, doing a great job for this Wayne State defense here. Sykes was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 from the 15. Bill, you talked about Hookfin, uh, their cornerback. He's on the year 24 tackles. He's also had a couple for losses. Forced to fumble, blocked to kick. Has three interceptions, has a safety. Kid's been all over the place. Second and 10. Carlock and Sykes, Sykes in the backfield. This is Sykes again, picking his way across the line of scrimmage for game two. It'll be third down and long. Wayne State defense again pursuing. You see everybody getting to the football. You see people getting a hand on the ball carrier, slowing them down, and then a teammate or two come up to finish it off. But again, that good pursuit, you've got to have that sort of activity on defense to do as well as they have, and they indeed have. As we said, there's a, the shot right there. They're number three in the, the nation in total defense. 133 and counting here in the first quarter. Sykes with 13 carries for 13 yards and four carries here in the first. Third and eight. A quick hit and nearly intercepted. Bernie Mueller, the free safety, read that one all the way. Bernie. And Terry almost had another interception. Bernie had the zone on his mind there. He was ready to go. Look at him. He's thinking about it. Watch this here. Terry's out to the flat, and Mueller read it perfectly. And Bernie will be kicking himself when he sees that in the film room tomorrow or Monday. The Lopers fail to capitalize on the turnover. They do hold the Wayne State offense for a moment. No, no, Casey no, Anderson no, no. in the punt. Jerry Garrett back deep to receive. And referees stop the play. Nineteen seventy one was the last Wayne State win over a Kearney team. Kearney State now Nebraska Kearney. 1971, the Wildcats won at 28 zip and have yet to be on the winning side of the scoreboard since. Bill, you know what's interesting about that? Uh, Clara Boroff is involved, obviously, in all of those uh, decisions, but also as a player, he played against Wayne State back 57, I think, 57, 8, and 9. Never lost there, and I think, didn't they win combined 121 to nothing uh, in Clara Boroff's years? And, well, that's quite a record. You have a team's number when you hear those kind of things, but 
Wayne State aims as we talked about in our pregame show in the moments here in the first quarter they aim to change all that today and they certainly have the horses this year to get that done. That's Brad Otis being tended to on the Wayne State sidelines and I'll tell you what if he's unable to come back that's a big loss for the Wildcats. High snap handled by Anderson. A nice high spiraling kick that sends Garrett all the way back to his 33 yard line. The nation's leading punt returner has nowhere to go. Good pursuit by Scott Franzen downfield. Jeff Sykes was also there, the tailback. Good punt coverage by the Lopers. Indeed it was. Anderson got every bit of his foot into that one, got the nose of the football to get up and then turn over. And then good pursuit, as you mentioned, Sykes downfield to make the uh, to make the play. Special teams can be oh so special for a team like Carney looking for a big win. First and ten for the Wildcats of their own 37. They still got good field position. And the quick pass intended for 83, Damon Thomas goes through his hands, and Salisbury is buried by Garrett Estes, the nose guard. Oh, Garrett decided it was time to let Salisbury know he's around. Watch this. Boom. He's on him. Garrett letting the ball go right through there. Chris Washington, who picked off the pass on that last Wayne State drive, was there to say hello to Damon Thomas. <laughs> Second and ten. Trips to the left. Thomas set up near on the right side. And they give it to the tailback. Lamont Rainey fights his way through traffic and bowls ahead for six yards. Chris Washington, the linebacker, makes the stop. Wibbles is also in there along with Brent Burkacek. Again, Bill, now we're going to see that the, the ball carrier going to break back over to the right here, pick up about five more, maybe four more. But again, the triple, triple set formation to the left side spreads that defense. And then the uh, Wayne State offense crossed him up and ran the football and picked up good yardage. 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Salisbury in a slow developing option fumble on the play. And read beautifully by the Lober defense. Butch Pelts 29 in there to, uh, to muddle up the play, so to speak. He read the reverse. Mark Hagedon was also there. Danny Aguayo coming around from that flanker spot on the right side took the handoff from Salisbury and it was slow in developing. And Real it, slow. And it gave the Lovers a chance <laughs> to set things up defensively. The clock winds down to zero on the before we can get the fourth down play off. It'll be fourth down and 12. The ball at the Wayne State 31 yard line and the Wildcats ready to pump the football away to the Lopers. We played one quarter here at Kearney and at the end of the first quarter our score Wayne State 7 and UNK nothing will return after this on Nebraska Public Television. Fourth down, Chamberlain with a high punt coming down to Wibbles at the 27-yard line. He calls fair catch. And the Lopers will begin play here in the second quarter. First down and 10 from their own 27-yard line. Bill, Wayne State 7, UNK nothing. Just going to say uh, it's somewhat of a moral victory of sorts, at least here in the early going for, for UN, University of Nebraska Kearney. They held Wayne State to seven points here in the first quarter. Wayne has been averaging just under 20 points scoring in the first quarter for the first five games. So Carney has cut it down considerably in terms of their scoring propensity. 20 points a quarter. The first quarter. That's amazing. You bet. Quick give to the fullback. E.J. Hancock, the junior from Wahoo. Hancock, number 20. Just to complete that whole thought, they've averaged uh, just a little 19.2 actually in the first quarter, 11, almost 12 points 
uh, per second quarter. You go into the third quarter, they've averaged 14, fourth quarter, eight points a game. And uh, so, again, Carney has done a good job defensively to, to keep things in check here. One thing that's been a problem for this Loper team this year is that they have gotten behind big early. Last week against Fort Hayes State, they fell behind 26-0 at halftime. They come back well in the second half, but they just don't have enough to keep it going as Mark Yule with the handoff gets it out near the 35-yard line. Sean Francisco over there again. We've said his name a number of times. Lincoln Southeast product. People back in Lincoln would be proud of that young man. He also is a presidential scholar at Wayne State. Doing a fine job all the way around here. There's a good block. Didn't catch the number of that train, but it was a great block. Uh, probably that offside tackle pulling. Third down and three from the 34-yard line. One set back, three receivers in the pattern. Pass to the tight end, Don Wattenpah, number 84. He needed the 33, they got the 34, and the UNK offense gets rolling again here in the second. Jason McIntyre over there on the hit. Quick setup by Terry again. There's a little activity coming from the left side here. I think they're trying to maybe set up another play. Sean Ryan was coming from a split position on the right side back in motion. We'll see if that leads to another play uh, down the road here a piece. First down and 10 from the UNK 40. They'll sweep it with Euler. Picked up a couple of good blocks. Boy, he's hit down hard. Bernie Mueller, the free safety, came over and laid a lick on the Tampa senior. Randy Carlock, 44, just switched from full or from linebacker to fullback. He was up there on the lead block. He let Uli watch 44 here on your screen. Also that offensive right there, bingo. He knocked number 37 from Wayne right back, Jason McIntyre. Second down and eight, a gain of two for Uli. We want to alert our viewers that momentarily you'll be going through an atmospheric anomaly, anomaly that will temporarily take your picture off the screen, but stay with us, you'll get it right back. And right there, the UNK offensive linemen threw a little anomaly of their own. Mike Wilson <laughs> broke through from the, from the defensive end spot to get the sack. 91 just beats, uh, I think it was Jamie White Eagle up front there. Jamie 6'5", 335 pounds. But on that play there, Mike Wilson, 6'4", 240. He's out of Omaha West Side. He simply beat Jamie to the inside. And that put Kerry, or, or Terry that is, uh, right on his backside. Wilson, a senior from Omaha West Side. Third down and 14. They'll work the draw with Uli, and he barely got across the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up two. It'll be fourth down and long, and we'll see Casey Anderson again. Here's the play again. A good job, uh, a good blitz that time. Slowed the ball carrier down on the right side. Atkinson there to make the hit. And there you see Mark Uli. Short of the uh, short of the sticks. Anderson again to punt. Fourth down and 11 from the UNK 38 yard line. Back deep it's Jerry Garrett. Garrett last week against Iowa Wesley in two returns 42 yards. He averages 14 yards per return. Franzen is down there and they've got him wrapped up. He also got some help from Justin Sixel, a freshman from Scotia. And nowhere to go. There you see Casey Anderson coming off the field. He just got a good kick off. Casey out of Carney, local guy right here, 6'1, 200 pounds. Won the job last year as a freshman, averaged a little over 38 yards a kick. Spent some time at a couple of summer camps this year and won some honors for distance and hang time. And he's taking his punting seriously, no question about it. Good punt last, uh, last time out. First and 10 for Wayne State at their own 18 yard line. Their worst field position of the day. Salisbury rolling, throwing across his body and too high for Asi Santos. Santos, the intended receiver, was wide open on the play. Not sure what the name of that duck was, but it got <laughs> away from Salisbury, and you won't see that happen very often. Watch him, he's going to fake the boot there, and everybody's got plenty of time here. And there's a receiver right there, and the ball just simply got away from Brett. 
way over the head of the intended receiver, I think, Ozzie uh, I think Santos. You and I were closer than anybody else to Santos <laughs> on the play. <laughs> Had a chance to make our first reception, but. <laughs> Second down and 10. A little bit of an option. This is Jason Williams, the tail back here in the second quarter. He's forced out of bounds after a pickup of a yard. Jonas Ginther, the left cornerback, forced him out of bounds. Jason Williams out of Omaha Creighton Prep, spent some time at Iowa State, transferred to Wayne. Big power runner, 6'2", 220 pounds, and you saw a little bit of power right there. There you see number 13. Last year led the team in rushing with 810 yards on the year. He was an all-state player at Creighton Prep. Pretty well put together. And they'll spread him out. Think they're going to throw here. They've got five receivers in the pattern. Again, they come with that underneath pass. It's complete to Damon Thomas. A nice open field tackle by the linebacker, Mark Hagedon. And they need the 28 and a half yard line, and they may be about a half yard short. Damon Thomas, with every reception, becomes the all-time leading pass receiver in Wayne State history, and they've had some good ones in recent years since they've gone to a passing attack. And they are indeed short by a yard, fourth down and one. Well, Dennis Wagner, what do you want to do? You've got an offense that can move the ball at will. Ten minutes here and counting in the second quarter. There's going to be a timeout. They're going to talk it over. You look at that Wayne State offense and you see Byron Chamberlain out there. You think, well, maybe they're going to go for it. But Chamberlain, the wide receiver, is in fact the team's punter. But Salisbury is also out there saying, hey, come on, we can make a yard. Carney calls timeout. I tell you, with the way things are right now, uh, I'll be interested to see what Dennis Wagner, just how far we have here, Bill. It's about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. It's a little bit further than a yard. There you see the measurement, maybe just a little bit over a yard. And they are indeed going to kick, and I think that's the best move. So Chamberlain will stay in and punt again. His third punt of the day coming up. And a nice job by the Carney defense. They held when they had to. They'll have a 10-man front facing Chamberlain. And it looks like Matt Wibbles is back to receive the punt. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. Wayne seven, Carney nothing. This is Wibbles with the fair catch, a sliding catch of the 48-yard line. He called for the fair catch, and it'll be great field position for UNK. Good job by Wibbles that time. He was shading his eyes to get a proper look at the football. There you see Junior out of Central City. But again, shading his eyes to make sure that he is able to feel the football and they have the ball just shy of the 50, call it the 48. Great field position to start a drive. Their best of the day. Carlock the fullback. Yuli is the tailback. And they'll sweep it with Yuli. Boy, he's hit down. That, that hole really closed up. Good pursuit by the Wayne State linebackers. Big John hammer Atkinson up. was there. Big hammer up in there. Atkinson to uh, help out and also number... 49, I believe, Bill Federson. He was also in on the hit. Another shot of Ken Terry. Last year, he was the number three quarterback going into fall camp. UNK started the year 0-2. Terry started to develop, became the leader, and then took over the offense. UNK finished 1992, winning seven of its last eight ball games to finish at 7-3. This year, they thought they'd have a lot better ball club, at least in terms of wins and losses, and they just haven't found the right formula. As Terry hits E.J. Hancock along the sidelines, he's knocked out by John Atkinson. Good pressure by Mike Wilson that time. Number 91. Here you see Terry going to go to the left side here. Good catch right there by number 20, E.J. Hancock. Atkinson just a little bit late getting over. Hancock's second reception of the year. Third down and four, a long four for the Lopers. They're in Wayne State territory for the second time today, and Wayne State comes with the blitz. The pass complete to the tight end. One call and cut down from behind by Pedersen. A big play for UNK. Wayne coming on the blitz that time, and they read it absolutely right as far as the offense goes. Ran that tight end right up to the inside. You'll see the blitz coming here. Well, you won't because 
Carney's line stopped it, but again, that tight end running a right up where that linebacker was. He came up open and a good job by Terry to deliver the football right on the money. There you see Wattenpah. He'll be over on the left side this time. First down and 10 from the wing, 25. 24, yes! Uly the tailback. He'll get the carry, and he's knocked down hard in the backfield by Federson. Bill Federson, the senior from Las Vegas, Nevada, a transfer from the College of the Desert with the big play, knocking Uly down for a three-yard loss. Huge play. He, uh, he was able to get that play over and done with before it even got started on the year. Three sacks, uh, those three coming against UNO. But again, Federson, I, I like College of the Desert. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> where that is, but I'd certainly like to see it someday. Loss of four, actually. Second down and 14. The ball now at the 29. Hancock and Uli in the backfield. This is Uli. Big hole this time. Got back to the original line of scrimmage before he's upended by 24, Robert McConico. And a good job by McConico. Stuck his nose right up. Watch this tackle, a great form tackle. Uli straight up field and McConico right there. Had the helmet right on the letters. And the ball carrying he met, no uh, further yardage was made, and that's a, just a great job by McConico. McConico out of Bradenton, Florida. It's a familiar town, yeah, though. It certainly is. <laughs> Hometown of Nebraska quarterback Tommy Frazier. Third down and 11. Seven and a half to play in the first half. Trips to the left. Terry with a nice block from Uli, but the pocket collapses again. And that vicious pursuit of the Wayne State defense gets Ken Terry one more time. Scott Eisenhower, the defensive end from Bloomfield High School, made the sack. Credit to play, however, for Eisenhower to McConico one more time. Bob McConico, watch 24 on the right side here. He's going to shut the play down to the right side. Well, we just won't be able to see it. But again, he shut it down. He stuffed it to the right. And then Eisenhower, from backside pursuit, able to make the hit. Nice work. Good teamwork on defense. Fourth down and a whole bunch. Fourth and 14. Mike Rowan has come in. Terry will hold on the field goal attempt. It'll be a 45-yarder. The snap is low. The kick is up and away. And good. Mike Rowan with the 45-yard field goal, his longest of the year. Previously, he had a 38-yarder. And credit Ken Terry, the snap was low and Terry was able to get it down and give Rowan a chance. Watch this here, right through the middle. Nice job of kicking. Great pressure by Wilson Hookfin again. He was trying to get his second block kick of the year, but he was not able to get there. And just a good job uh, by the Carney offense to get that ball up and get it done. Terry did a great job just making the set. He was uh, the uh, holder on the play and the ball uh, was a little bit short on the snap. But Ken Terry able to snap it up set it up and then the block or the uh, kick by Rowan. Nice work. 7-3 Wayne State UNK getting a little momentum back. 6:35 remaining in the first half. Dennis Wagner the fifth year head coach of the Wayne State College Wildcats. His ball club has gotten off to a 5-0 start here in 1993. Last week they're ranked number 13 in the country and then they defeat Iowa Wesleyan by 29 points. What happens, they drop five <laughs> spots in the Division II poll. So they came in here with a lot to prove. They felt like their pride was bruised a little bit. A great deal, Bill. I tell you, that's hard to understand how uh, that can happen, but indeed it did. And uh, what it does is has a tendency to make a team want to run the score up uh, just to, to prove some, uh, some points. But they're having, their, uh, they're having a tough time here this afternoon. 7-3 to three is our score. 6.35 left here in the second quarter. Rowan kicks the ball. Damon Thomas with it at the three. Justin Sixel is there. E.J. Hancock, number 20, came in to finish him off. Carney a little bit pumped up on that score. They got three points up on the board, and uh, they want to get this job done. A little uh, traffic jam back there between the receivers. And now... Thomas is going to get knocked down, as, as you mentioned, was E.J. Hancock, and Sissel was also there. J or Justin Sixel, that is. And we've got another penalty flag on the far side of the field at the 35-yard line. Well, we've seen that once before. And that'll be a penalty against the kicking team. That'll go against UNK. 
And Rowan will have to tee it up once again. Mike Rowan, the 5'8 sophomore from Omaha West Side, with the 45 yard field goal, putting UNK on the board. And again, Damon Thomas, number 83 on the left, and Wilson Hookfin, 27 on the right. I'll have a little conversation this time. Okay, if it's coming to me, I've got it. If it comes to you, you've got it. Well, Thomas took a little liberty on that kickoff. Uh, he was in some territory he didn't belong in, and uh, I'm not sure what the instruction is back there. If maybe Thomas is supposed to take everything, but the ball was <laughs> way over to the right side, and and Hookfin, Wilson Hookfin, thought, "Hey, I'm going to get my shot here." But uh, again, Thomas drifted over and took it away. There you see Claire Boroff. He's he's in this ball game, fans. He hasn't lost to this uh, Wayne State team as a coach or a player for 24 years. We're going to try to cut the field down and get it to uh, Hookfin. Hookfin at the turn of him. And they'll bring it to that near side. Hookfin across the 30. Oh, what a big block he got. Wilson Hookfin with a big kickoff return Wilson down to the UNK 31 yard line. Oh, is that a costly penalty? Jonas Ginther finally made the tackle, number 17. And Damon Thomas, a big block. Watch way downfield after. We'll try to pick up the number of who got him free here uh, along the sideline. There's a block right there. Couldn't pick up the number, but there's a block right there by Thomas. Now he's setting up to try to make another block, and indeed does. But Hookfin not able to, uh, to get by as backside pursuit picked him up. But what a excellent run, and that penalty uh, gave them a lot of new life here. I'll tell you what, that shouldn't go in the books as a five-yard penalty. It should go as a as a, a multi-yard penalty because that was, instead of first down and 10 from the 12, Wayne State has it first down and 10, but it's intercepted. 41, John Chappell, the senior from Corpus Christi, picked off Salisbury for the second time today. John's had a problem with injuries throughout his career here, but he really uh, flashed all the injury off on this play. Watch this read. Salisbury sets up, and Chapel just comes from that deep, uh, deep spot and picks it off. Good read, good break to the football, and really takes a big threat out of the Wayne State uh, hands with about 6-12 left here in the second quarter. I tell you what, that is a huge turn of events on the penalty, the big kickoff return. And now the interception. Salisbury intercepted twice today. Coming into play through five games, he'd only pick, been picked off four times. First and 10 from the 20 for the Lopers. Jeff Sykes up the middle, fights for three. Jason McIntyre with the stop. There's a there good shot. John out of Corpus Christi is a member, or as I mentioned, a problem with injuries here. Just played in three games last year. And made a big play right there. 6'3", 235 pounds. Came out of that linebacker spot, and there you hear the instruction. That's the hot side to our secondary. He won't come back here unless he scrambles, or unless they bring this guy clear back underneath. But you people in this area here, side he's looking to, that's where the gain is. Boy, you set that up nice, John. Terry Renner, the defensive coordinator for the Lopers. Bounds Clint Wolf in his offense's turn to try and do something with the football. Second down and eight play. Sykes with the carry. Has little or no room to run. 5-15 and counting here in the first half. Wayne State 7, UNK 3. On paper, it looks like a mismatch. On the field, it's anything but. And then I just straightened out. And each uh, second that ticks off, Bill, that uh, goes by here just gives the Carney Antelopes uh, a lot more confidence in what's going on out there. And uh, hey, they think they can bite the tall dog, and they have so far. Seven to three. I think that was Mike Rowan, the kicker on the sidelines, telling how he made that last tackle <laughs> on the kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kickers get in there. They're, they're tough guys. <laughs> Byron Bennett will tell you that, the uh, Husker kicker. <laughs> Third down and eight, and we've got a whistle before the snap. UNK may have called its second time out, and they indeed have. Seven to three, our score, 443 to play here in the first half. Third down and eight at the 23, Carney with its second time out. NCAA Division II football on NETV is presented in part by viewers like you who are contributing members of Nebraskans for Public Television. We need your financial support to continue to provide programs like this on your statewide network. If you're not already a member, please write to Nebraskans for Public Television, 
Post Office Box 83111, Department S, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68501. Nebraska Public Television, it's TV worth watching. Homecoming 1993 here at Foster Field in Kearney. They also had a Hall of Fame night last night at the homecoming ceremonies. Tim Higgins, Ron Locke, Rosella Meyer, and Larry Snell all inducted into the UNK Hall of Fame, and we certainly congratulate those four inductees. Third down and eight after the timeout. Big play for the UNK offense. Terry, not a lot of time. One paw, the pass is intended for him. It's knocked down by Francisco. There was some contact before the ball got there, but no penalty flag on the play. Good job by that young man again, number 25, Sean Francisco. Right at the very last second, able to extend and knock the football down. Bill, uh, uh, a note on, uh, on Brad Otis, number 96. He is back in the lineup. He was in on that series, so it's good to see that he's been able to overcome whatever bump or bruise he had. Casey Anderson with a line drive punt. Bounces away from Jerry Garrett and takes a big UNK roll down to the 19-yard line. Another big break for the Lopers. John Drew finally down the football. And the Wildcats start in a hole. So UNK is unable to capitalize on the turnover, but it was a big interception because it really took away some momentum that Wayne State had built up after that big return by Wilson Hookfin. First down and 10. The ball at the 19-yard line. Wayne State with a four-point lead, 7-3. to three. Lamont Rainey with a short touchdown run in the first quarter to get Wayne State on the board first, and Mike Rowan with a 45-yard field goal for Carney's only answer. This is Jason Williams diving up the middle, the junior from Creighton Prep, picking up five, six yards on the play, Mark Hagedon with the tackle. Here you see him moving right up the middle again, Williams and uh, Hagedon on the tackle. Mark out of York. Gain of six. Second down and four, and again it's Williams. And again up the middle, and again for short yardage. Williams is the power back of the two Wayne tailbacks. Lamont Radium, much more of a side-to-side -side slashing type runner. Jason Williams will just line it up and run it right at you. Garrett Estes made the tackle on the last play. Third down and less than one. The ball at the Wayne 28-yard line. Four receivers in the pattern. Williams the tailback. And Williams will get on that half option. And he's got some room to run. Nice open field tackle by Matt Wibbles. But not before Williams gained 12 yards on the play and picked up the other another first down. One of the things they want to do is uh, get that pitch very quick. Mike Irwin's going to come in here and make Salisbury pitch it immediately. And then Williams is going to pick up good yardage to the right side. He had five 100-yard-plus games last year, did Jason Williams. He's a big load out there, as we talked about earlier, 6'2", 220 pounds. He's got two straight games over 100 yards coming into this one. First and 10 from the 42. Salisbury again with that quick pass to Chamberlain. And Chamberlain fights through tackles and gets his way into UNK territory at the 44-yard line. You Butch Chamberlain Peltz finally made the stop. A little talking going on down there. It looked like uh, Matt Wibble's trying to do a little of the sportsman routine, but Chamberlain would have none of that. Here you see another great shot, a player's eye view right here. And now you're going to see Chamberlain slip one tackle, two. Actually, that was the third attempt, and here comes the fourth and the, and the fifth guy. So fifth and sixth. <laughs> five, five guys had a shot at Byron Chamberlain, six foot three, 215 pounds. Jason Williams with the carry. Inside three to play in the first half. Wayne State seven, UNK three. Wayne State with all three of its timeouts remaining. Bob McKissick made the tackle. And now Wayne State will go with that hurry up. No huddle offense. A gain of three for Williams. Second down and six. Check it, seven. And there's moving along the offensive line. Left guard is going to cost him five yards. They'll back it up five. That would be number 78, and you handle it. That's just Obi. <laughs> <laughs> Onishiogu. Obi Onishiogu. 
from Carver, Massachusetts. He's talking to uh, their sports information director, Dean Watson. He said uh, the radio announcer just says, Obi, and yeah. that's what I'll go with. <laughs> I asked him the same thing. I said, how do you pronounce his last name? He says, we don't know. I said, well, yeah, but funny. Uh, how do you pronounce it? He says, pronounce it. And he said, our coaches say Obi, our announcers say Obi, and everybody in Wayne calls him Obi. <laughs> the officials called him for a five-yard motion penalty, setting up second down and 11 from the UNK 45. Quick drop by Salisbury, penalty flag on the play. The pass is complete to Ozzie Sandoz, number 22. But Dan Fox got good pressure on the quarterback, Salisbury, and we may have another holding penalty that'll back the Wildcats up even more. There's the call from the referee. Indeed, it is a holding penalty. We'll back it up 15. Came in on the, uh, in the vicinity, that is, uh, the right side. Let's take a look and see if we can spot it here. Look at Fox come in there, swimming in there, and finally gets his ankle. Looked like number 68 actually uh, on the hold. That's Brian. His reaction uh, after the uh, flag was thrown. That's Brian Thompson who was defending against Dan Fox. Second down and even more. 27 to go. Wayne State began this uh, this series inside the UN UNK territory. The pass intended for 83, Damon Thomas is knocked away, and he's rocked by Chris Washington and Victor Davis. I tell you, it's what happened before the play developed. Uh, number 14, Victor da Davis was able to take the receiver out of the play. It's a great hit by Washington. If we can pick it up here, watch for number 14. As Salisbury goes to the left, the play, this, all of this happened prior to Thomas coming back into the picture, Damon Thomas, but Victor Davis just knocked him off the line of scrimmage to start the play, and that ruined the route, and then it gave people a chance to get over and help out on the play. This Kearney defense, Bill, has done a great job here in the first half. Third and 27, they need the UNK 33 for the first down. They go with the quick pass. This is number eight, Jerry Garrett, with some room to run, but not nearly enough for the first down. Matt Wibbles with a nice open field tackle on the explosive receiver, Jerry Garrett. Central City product, Matt Wibbles, there he is, 5'11", 180. He's a big play defensive back, and he made a big play right there. That play was destined to pick up better yardage, but he was able to knock it down. It was a moving screen to the right side, and Garrett came in, made the grab, but Wibbles was there. He, had, he was able to diagnose, smell it out, and then make the hit. Again, a big play, he's a big play back. Fourth down and 15, the ball spotted at the UNK 48-yard line, and... They're not gonna take a chance. They're gonna go ahead and kick it, I believe, and Dennis Wagner wants to put uh, Carney back in the hole and try to go in and regroup. I'll tell you what, they thought about it, though. They did, about and, a second. And time running down on the 25-second clock. Wayne thought about calling a timeout. Salisbury indicated that maybe they wanted one, but didn't tell the official, and the penalty flag was thrown. And in fact, he did get the timeout before the penalty flag was thrown. So Wayne, burns its, Wayne State burns its first timeout of the first half with exactly one minute remaining in the second half. It'll be fourth down and 15 yards to go. The ball at the UNK 48-yard line. Mac, w Matt Wibbles is setting up down at the, his own 12-yard line, waiting to receive the punt. Claire Boroff, talked to him yesterday, and I, you know, I asked him about well, what's been happening this year. Why one and four? You thought you'd have a high-powered offense, and you thought, well, you, you might be in a position that Wayne's in at five and zero. Oh. Instead, they're one and four. He says it's like looking at a car that won't run. You just don't know what's wrong with it. But this is going to be a big test of character for this ball club today. I'll tell you what. Right now, they're passing that test, even though they trail, but they only trail by four. It could be a lot more. Well, Bill, I just added up. We talked about those scoring figures in the first quarter and the second quarter. Wayne has been averaging through the year 30 points through the first uh, three or two quarters, that is, and Carney uh, has only given up seven thus far. So they're definitely in this ballgame and doing a great job. Dave Munz Mentzer, his first punt of the afternoon, is not a good one. He does get a friendly roll, and the ball will be spotted down at the UNK 27-yard line. Chad Misek puts some pressure from the outside on Menser. It'll be first and 10 for UNK at their own 27. 
49 seconds remaining in the first half. Wayne with a 7-3 lead. The Wildcats getting on the board first. Lamont Rainey with a two-yard touchdown run in the first quarter, and then Mike Rowan with a 45-yard field goal earlier in this quarter to make it 7-3. Haven't heard much about from Doug Russell this half, but let's see if something will happen here in the last 49 seconds. Instead, they'll give it to Yuli up the middle. And Claire Borov may be content to run out the clock here in the first half and be satisfied with that 7-3 margin. Adonis Young, the nose tackle, made the stop on Yuli. 30 seconds and counting remaining in the first half. Big day of college football all around the country. Miami, Florida State, Oklahoma, Texas, Michigan, Michigan State. All those big rivalries. We've got one for you right here on any TV. And I'll tell you what, those intangibles play big factors in ball games, and that rivalry factor is a big one here. This is Terry rolling out. The pass on the first. We nearly saw that on that last series when the pass was intended for Wattenpah. They didn't get the call. Again, intended for the tight end. This time they do get it. It's John Atkinson putting some pressure on the quarterback, Terry. But we will have a penalty with six seconds remaining in the first half. Well, with six seconds, time to air it out. If you can get it that far. Get it going if you can. Try to throw one as long as you can. He's got Doug Russell back in the ball game. I think uh, Zabawa is in there. Automatic first down. Wayne State's racked up a few flags against them today, and that has certainly helped the Loper cause. A ball is spotted at the UNK 34-yard line. Six seconds remaining in all likelihood. The final play of the first half. Father going downfield. Instead, Yuli goes down hard. Bill Federson, the outside linebacker, adds to his already productive first half. And that's the way the first half comes to an end. Wayne State started out strong. They got that offense in high gear, scored early. But then the UNK defense caught some momentum and was able to hold down that offense. Got three points of their own. It's been a good one so far. Our score at the end of the first half is Wayne State 7 and UNK 3. We'll return with more after this on Nebraska Public Television. Hello, I'm Lita Powell Drake. Remember years ago, downtown was the place to be. That's where the action was. Oh, remember the stores and the restaurants and the movies? But that all changed when the shopping malls began to lure people away. Well, tonight at 7 o'clock on Statewide, we're going to look at what happened to the downtown scenes in both Lincoln and Omaha. In the 1980s, remember, both cities poured thousands of dollars into revitalizing the downtown districts with little success. Only now, it's beginning to change. And the reason has more to do with people wanting to live there than shop there. Find out more tonight at 7 o'clock. Then, at 7.30, an American classic gets a new look. Trevor Nunn has produced the first ever television production of Porgy and Bess. Music is fabulous. It stars Willard White and Cynthia Heyman. Oh, the singing is absolutely spectacular. I hope you'll have a chance to see it. It's tonight at 7.30, remember. Then, at 11 o'clock tonight, our Saturday night movie is going to take you to England to visit a very strange household with five very, very different people and one very feisty dog. It's called Ending Up, and it stars uh, Dame Wendy Hiller and Sir John Mills. Watch it. Public TV is hip to kids. Just check out what the critics are saying. The New York Daily News calls In the Mix just the right mix. The LA Times says its reports are surprisingly substantial. And Club Connect is an illuminating, non-traditional teen magazine. TV Guide says Club Connect and In the Mix are informative and entertaining. Well, this critic thinks they're both very cool. When it comes to shows I want to see, I check out Public TV. Bill Dolman and Adrian Fiala back at Foster Field in Kearney, Nebraska. A pretty good ball game going on here. Wayne State with a 7-3 lead over the UNK Lopers. 
An interstate rivalry between these two NCAA Division II football teams. Wayne coming in, 5-0 and on the year, ranked number 18 in the country, a high-powered offense, a tough defense, but I'll tell you what, the Lopers have held their own. And, uh, and that 7-3 margin on the scoreboard shows why. They got the field goal from Mike Rowan in the second, a 45-yarder in the second period for what you and Kay's three points. Lamont Rainey scoring the only touchdown of the game, a two-yard run for Wayne State in the first quarter. Homecoming 1993 here at the University of Nebraska, Kearney. A lot of activities taking place last night and of course the football game today. And on the field right now, it's the UNK Marching Band. Dr. Gary Davis is the director of the UNK Band. Let's enjoy some of the halftime activities. in the current by the UNK Marching Band here at homecoming 1993. University of Nebraska Kearney hosting the Wayne State Wildcats. Wayne State's program has improved greatly over the last couple of years and primarily under the direction of athletic director Pete Chapman. And earlier today, I had a chance to talk with the Wayne State AD, Mr. Pete Chapman. Pete, it's been an interesting year for you already during this football season, 5-0, and and as athletic director, one of the best decisions you have made, I guess it's turning out to be a good one, just hiring Dennis Wagner as your coach. How'd you find him? Well, we went through a, an interview process. Dennis had been the uh, offensive coordinator at St. Cloud State uh, that year, when my last year as a head football coach and athletic director, and, and we had played St. Cloud, so I got to see him a little bit of it, and uh, just had some tremendous uh, uh, recommendations for him. Uh, he interviewed well, and since that point, he hasn't done anything to disappoint us. And he certainly made uh, Wayne State more of a national college because you are getting people from all over the country to come play football there. Dennis does it, and his staff do a very, very good job of recruiting both uh, regionally within Nebraska and also uh, using some of their ties from their the past coaching stints to, to bring kids here. So that has brought a, a large variety of kids. Well, let's talk about the rest of your athletic program. You've got volleyball going on right now. You've had good success with women's basketball. Uh, how is the state of uh, Wayne State Collegiate Athletics? Well, we think that uh, the growing pains of going from the NAIA to the NCAA Division II uh, are starting to pay off for us. As you mentioned, we're, you know, right now we're, our cross country and uh, golf teams are, are, are in full swing along with our volleyball team. Uh, new first year coach, uh, uh, Sharon Vanis, is directing our volleyball program right now. Our, Women's basketball program has had uh, two great seasons in a row, and we're really looking forward to, to what Coach Barry uh, will bring to that program and our baseball and softball programs, uh, track programs. It's, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great time to be at Wayne State right now. What are some of the challenges that, are, that you face in Division II and being an independent, uh, things that you're working on as athletic director? Well, probably from the administrative point, uh, 
all the uh, scheduling is probably the hardest part and trying to keep some consistency in when you play and who you play. Being an independent, as is uh, the University of Nebraska Kearney, uh, that's, that's a very hard job. Uh, the other part is the fundraising. I mean, that, that gets to be today, college athletics and fundraising seem to go hand in hand. And, and that's been our, our, our challenge since going to Division II, is raising the money for scholarships and the needed scholarships and financial support for the athletic program. How about finding a conference? We've talked to Dick Beechner over the last couple of years about his search and trying to find a, an affiliation, and you've kind of been in the same boat with him. I think uh, our, our efforts are synonymous. I mean, we were both in the Central States Conference together. Uh, we're both independents in this state. Uh, I know we've, we've looked toward the, the North Central and tried to get them to understand that maybe expansion is a nice idea. Uh, I know Dick's looked, uh, and we did at uh, one time too, into the Rocky Mountain, and, and for us that just seemed to be uh, too far. Um, and we've been discussing things with some schools in Minnesota. And so it's an ongoing thing, you know, it's a common joke. That's the first thing we check on our calendars in the morning is who, who we're supposed to call today. You've run into some problems, though, scheduling. I know that's been prob a problem for the football team this year, playing Mayville up in North Dakota, and that has, uh, has hurt them a bit because they were 13th a week ago and now down to 18th, and that has to be frustrating to, to have something that you really have no control over right now. It's frustrating from that point is because we have to schedule as, you know, does everybody else in advance. Uh, when we had scheduled some of the teams that we're playing now, that was four years ago, and, and we were struggling at that point in time. And, and yeah, the rating committee looks at the, our schedule and they want to compare the strength of our schedule. And I keep trying to get them to, to try to see how strong our football team is. And uh, that does hurt us at times. Uh, we kind of hoped we could get through those last three weeks and get to a, a quality Division II program like UNK so that we could uh, have a test of what we, you know, what we are and what we have been. We start out the season with two uh, good wins over uh, North Central schools, and, and we go up to Michigan Tech um, in a couple of weeks, which is also undefeated at this point in time. And, and then we finish up in the uh, Metrodome playing at the University of Minnesota Duluth. How about for you personally? You were the football coach at Wayne State for quite some time and then took over as athletic director. Which has been, uh, do you miss coaching and how has it been being athletic director? Um, yeah, I, there are a lot of things about coaching I miss. I, I miss uh, the kids. Uh, I try really hard to, to stay as close to them as I can. Um, and now it's getting to the point where uh, there are no kids left that, uh, you know, that I recruited. And so it's, that, that makes it a little bit more difficult. There are a lot of things about coaching I don't miss. I, I came down with the team yesterday, and I realized what a four-hour bus trip was like <laughs> on that bus. So I don't like that part of it. But I, I enjoy working with the coaches, too. I mean, that's, that's, that's the good part of being the athletic director. Uh, uh, it's, it, it was a great opportunity. I don't think too many people have an opportunity to, to take a school from the NEI to the NCAA. To, to not have a conference and to try to find a conference to establish all the fundraising that we've done and, and the contacts that we make with people in fundraising. And, and uh, I have a great opportunity because I work for a great president, Dr. Donald Nash. And so that makes it a lot easier. And the people at Wayne State uh, make the job a lot easier. And you're certainly developing a great program at Wayne State. Continued success with this football season and throughout the year, Pete. Well, thank you. And I'd like to thank Nebraska Public Television. I think this is a tremendous chance for people in Nebraska to see a, a great sporting opportunity, which is NCAA Division II football. Thanks. Thank you. Pete Chapman, the athletic director at Wayne State College. I tell you, he is so dedicated to his job. His brother-in-law, John Buckley, is being married today in Lincoln. So Pete wanted to extend his best wishes, and so do we, to John and Mary Buckley of Lincoln on their wedding today. We are at halftime, and our score, Wayne State 7 and UNK 3. We'll return with more after this on Nebraska Public Television. It happens every day and night. It doesn't stop when you graduate or reach a certain age. We are all of us learning, even now. You see something unexpected, and you let it take you to a new place. It's not important to understand fully, but just to see. Some call it education, but that's only a word. You see something in a person's face, you hear their story, and that teaches you all that they struggle to learn. Maybe you're just remembering something you knew all along, but forgot. It could be we're here solely to remind each other what must not be missed or ignored, but celebrated and finally known. When do we stop learning? Maybe never. In Chinese medicine, that the body has to move. It's Billy 
Joel with a personal look at how he makes the music that moves us all along his river of dreams. Billy Joel. In the spotlight. Watch Billy Joel, Wednesday night at 8 on Nebraska Public Television. Next time on Frontline, how did GM, the world's largest industrial corporation, fall from grace? Hundreds of thousands of jobs lost, plants closing, people losing everything they have. Frontline investigates GM and its struggle to survive in the heartbeat of America. See you Tuesday night at 9 on Nebraska Public Television. Bill Noman and Adrian Fiala back at Foster Field at the University of Nebraska Kearney, where Wayne State holds on to a 7-3 lead over the Lopers here at halftime. You know, one of our favorite trips every year or any time is when we can come out here to Kearney and visit the folks here at UNK. And one of our favorites is UNK Athletic Director Dick Beechner, and I also had a chance to talk to him earlier today. Dick, it's always great to be out here at Kearney to cover some of the Antelope uh, athletics. Uh, this year, however, the football team has had some tough times, and you thought this would be a great year. What's, uh, what's been the story so far? Well, let me just respond to the first thing. We really appreciate any TV coming out to do a, an event. I think it's great exposure for UNK and, and uh, Wayne State. And so once again, we're happy to have you and your crew here. As far as our football team, uh, it's been somewhat of a disappointing year. I think that our coaches and our players still feel that we have the potential for a uh, a good football team and uh, having been a football coach uh, sometimes it's intangibles that create a situation like we're in right now uh, we've turned the ball over a lot of times which certainly has hurt us we haven't had any consistency on offense and I think on some occasions our special teams have hurt us some because the uh, offense uh, opponents offense has had good field position but this is a different day to day <laughs> in fact the sun's out and Wayne State's a good rivalry and we've be defeated them 21 years and if I were on Wayne's side, uh, I'd be a little concerned about that. <laughs> well, you know, you talked about the sun shining. If you guys could turn the heat up a little bit out here, we'd be a lot better off. <laughs> well, your, your, t your teeth are chattering more than mine. <laughs> but we're fortunate to have this kind of day. Uh, yesterday when you were here, it looked pretty miserable. And uh, I hope that we have a crowd and the real football fan will be here and those that are a little concerned about the weather are watching us on television. Well, you've had some, some success and some things to cheer about in volleyball and some other aspects of your athletic program. Volleyball team ranked number tw 25 in the country. Two wins last night. Uh, a pretty good start for them. I think so. We don't want to say that our football season's over by any means, but uh, Patty Satorius, our new volleyball coach, uh, has done an outstanding job replacing Rosella Meyer, who was taken into our Hall of Fame last night, uh, one of the five coaches inducted in the NAIA Hall of Fame a year or two ago. But we've got a 10-game winning streak going, 16-7, and seven, and we defeated uh, three or four teams in the top 20, so we're pleased about that. Golf doesn't get much attention very often, but uh, we won an invitational here yesterday, and Wesleyan has had a fine golf team over the last couple of years, and we defeated them. We won a tournament up in North Dakota, and we finished well down in, uh, down in the uh, tournament uh, in Kansas a couple of weeks ago. So that's on the plus side, and I think that uh, the non-traditional, i got to get used to saying <laughs> that, uh, the non-traditional softball and baseball has gone relatively well. So we're geared up for a good wrestling year, and uh, our cross-country team, even though we have uh, decided to redshirt three uh, athletes because of the nationals here in 1994 uh, we were ranked in the top 20 in the nation in cross country a week ago and we ran fairly well out in boulder colorado last week so everything's not at a loss and i think totally our program is is doing relatively well it's always great to see all of the Nebraska kids that are involved in the, the UNK program. And one thing that you've done this year is been able to bring UNK athletics to even more people through a radio network. We're pleased about that. Uh, KGFW is our flagship station, and uh, O'Neill and Central City and uh, McCook. And then last week, uh, KRVN picked us up. So I think we had total coverage in the state of Nebraska. Maybe there were some of our graduates out in California that even heard us last week. but. <laughs> That's a method that we've been working for. I think it's an opportunity to gain more exposure, not only for athletics, but our entire academic program. And uh, the more often you hear uh, UNK or if the University of Nebraska happens to be on television or Oklahoma or any school, uh, there's an association there. And if there's a certain amount of success, I think people go to those places. 
You mentioned the academics and also administratively, uh, you uh, welcome Gladys Stiles Johnston, the new chancellor. How has that affected uh, UNK athletics and uh, what type of relationship do you look forward to with her? Let me just dwell on athletics. I don't want to fail to mention the fact that uh, our softball team was number one in the nation uh, with a GPA last uh, from last year. We had a 3.36, and we were third in the nation overall when Division One, Two, II, and Three uh, turned in their grades. So I kind of kidded uh, Coach Simmons if our batting average would have been that good, we might have won more <laughs> games. But anyway, uh, Gladys Stiles Johnson's been a nice addition to the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Uh, she brings a lot of warmth. Uh, she's a very people-oriented person. I think she wants to maintain the fact that the University of Nebraska at Kearney for years and years has been concerned about teaching. Uh, we're not going to be a, a high-level research university, but I think one of the reasons that we've established an outstanding reputation in UNK is because the professors have cared, and they haven't spent a lot of time in, in the lab and, and writing a lot of articles because teaching has been number one. We're going to have to do more of that now since we're a part of the university system in terms of tenure and rank and, and promotions and things like that. But I think our number one goal is to teach. Well, Dick, you've done a lot of, put a lot of time and put a lot of care into UNK athletics. We appreciate all you do for us and continued success in the future. Well, thank you, and I hope it's a great football game, and I hope that uh, it's interesting for the sake that you've got a big, <laughs> big crew out here. And, and as just see, Adrian uh, walked up with a nice suntan. But we're looking forward to uh, an outstanding foot football game with a real rival, Wayne State. Thanks. Thank you. It has been an outstanding football game. Our score here at halftime, Wayne State 7 and UNK 3. We'll have more from Foster Field and Kearney right after this on Nebraska Public Television. These are Britain's most talented orchestral composers. These are deadheads. What do the two have in common? The Grateful Dead. If you have to call the Grateful Dead for assistance, you're definitely falling between the cracks of all major charity and everything else. Find out how one of America's most popular bands is helping preserve England's musical heritage. Don't miss The Grateful and the Dead. See it Wednesday at 9. This fall, be a part of a special family reunion. Things are changing, Papa. I want things to remain as they've been. I want things to change. You're a very special young girl. Nathan, you're not a child. Your father is a very fine man. I love you, John Morgan. This is to you, Lily. Public Television is proud to present the award-winning series, I'll Fly Away. Don't miss the opportunity. It begins Monday night at 7 on Nebraska Public Television. Consider taking a journey through today's news. Consider how the world opens up. How refreshingly intelligent the news can be. All Things Considered from NPR. We think you'll find the difference considerable. Weekday afternoons on Nebraska Public Radio. Bill Dolman and Adrian Fiala at Foster Field in Kearney, Nebraska. Wayne State 7, UNK 3. Halftime activities are winding down here at Homecoming 93. Here on the campus of the University of Nebraska, Kearney, we take a look at the halftime statistics, Adrian. And I think the big key as you look at the bottom of the screen is the time of possession. Wayne State, with that well, big offense, they don't have the football. They can't score. They can't score. Absolutely, Bill. That's a, a one big key. Uh, another big key as far as the Wildcats go. They've had 54 yards and penalties. They've also turned the ball over two times. Two pass interceptions thrown by Brett Salisbury here this afternoon. He's only thrown four uh, through the first five games. So they turned it over. They penalized themselves. And then the Lopers able to play ball control, which Claire Boroff wanted to do when we talked to him again in the pregame uh, in the pregame comments. The other thing, uh, again, for the Lopers, uh, a lot of confidence built up. That secondary did a good job uh, in the first half. Their defense as a whole did a good job in that first half. They have to feel that uh, basically, Bill, that they, they're really right in this football game and really have an advantage right now. As I mentioned earlier, 
Wayne this year in the first half scoring 31 points against their opponents eight and today they've only got seven here in the first half and Wayne, and uh, Carney has three on the board so again it's been a somewhat of a, a victory in the first half for Carney here this far and they only need to keep that momentum going here in the second half and Wayne's going to have a heck of a football game on their hands they already do no question about it well a moral victory in the first half for UNK that guy right there Claire Boroff the 21 year head coach of the University of Nebraska Kearney. He has had a lot of victories against Wayne State. In fact, he is 21 and 0 against the Wildcats in his career. And again, as Adrian mentioned, during his playing days back in the 1950s, they outscored Wayne State three straight years by a combined score of 121 to nothing. Well, obviously, Dennis Wagner has brought that Wayne State program to a whole new level since back in the 50s. But Claire Boroff, it just seems like Tom Osborne and Pat Jones, he's got it's, that number. I don't know why that works in athletics the way it does, Bill, but uh, there are relationships amongst teams where that indeed is the case. And no matter what happens out there, the team with the better athletes and, all, and the better ball club all the way around, you know, you, you just have the number. You have the... Uh, uh, the aura, I guess, of, uh, of winning and losing, and uh, that's what it boils down to. And right now, uh, no question about it, UNK right in this football game. And there you see, again, that, that graphic with respect to Claire Borov's days here uh, when it was called Carnegie State. And uh, it's just incredible how that works out sometimes. We're about ready to get it underway. The, actually, the, the yardage uh, statistic in the first half, basically domination by Wayne State. But again, the real stat is 7-3, to three, and Wayne, uh, or Carney, that is, control the ball for 18 minutes. Wayne State won the opening toss. They elected to defer till the second half, and they will receive the second half. Kickoff off the foot of Mike Rowan, who gets a pretty good foot into it. Wilson Hookfin in the end zone, and he'll bring it out. Cuts back upfield, gets some pretty good yardage all the way up to the 30-yard line. Two men to beat, and he's done it. Wilson Hookfin. five yards to the end zone on the opening kickoff of the second half no penalty flags on the play and the Wildcats special teams have answered the call on the opening bell of the third quarter you talk about excitement that man right there 27 Wilson Hookfin gonna see it one more time but just a thing of beauty ball takes him way back in the end zone he decides to bring it out and here we go it's off to the races just a just good running all the way around. He just basically does this whole thing by himself. Look at those moves, broken field running. This guy just gets it going. And he is indeed called Mr. Excitement on this football team. And that's the reason why right there. The senior from New Orleans, Louisiana, 6'2", 180 pounder. The NFL scouts love him. He's got three interceptions this year. Make it four, he had one earlier. And now with a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, that's what it'll go in the books as. It was actually a whole lot more than that. Andy Parr in for the point after the kick is good. And 16 seconds into quarter number three, Wayne State now with a 14-3 lead on UNK. We have yet to take an offensive snap from center. Well, it's the type you. of situation right now where Carney just has to forget about that play, go back out and get back into their pattern that, uh, that they established in the first half. I mean, those kind of plays are going to happen. Uh, there's no reason to panic. It's just 14 to 3. You've got a lot of football left to go here. So no, uh, no reason to get the old dauber down, as we used to say. Stay right in the football game and, and bring it back and get it going. Uh, that's all that Carney has to do. They played well in that first half. They can do it again here in the second half. Dennis Wagner has to feel a little bit more comfortable now with, a, with an 11-point lead to play with instead of that four-point margin. Jeff Sykes and Scott Franzen. Well, we'll see what the Loper return men can do. Teeing the ball up is Danny Ferguson. He's a wideout. Or check that. Now, that is number 11. It will look like number one. Number 11, Brett Getman, a freshman from Sarasota, Florida, has the ball teed up at the 35. Hookfin likes to run back kicks, Bill. Remember last time uh, he handled the football on the kickoff? He about broke it loose on that one uh, after that, that re-kick. Hey, this kid, he's a preseason All-America, All-Nebraska candidate. In junior college last year, he was All-American on defense in Antelope Valley Junior College. Here we go. Getman with a pooch kick coming down to Franz and who falls as he catches at the 26-yard line. Getman with a unique kickoff style and just taking the two 
two steps as if he was kicking a field goal. Not a lot of distance on it. Trying to get hang time and cut the field down, kicking the ball to the right side, down that right side hash mark. And again, cut the field down, cut the return down. There you saw number 24 for the Lopers, Frangin. Tough job, that uh, ball hanging right up in the sun here today. Tough job to pick up the rotation, make the catch. First down and 10 at their own 27-yard line for Ken Terry and the Loper offense. And they'll start out conservatively. Mark Uley off left guard for no gain of any. He may have even lost a yard, and he did. Mark Uley in the first half, 11 carries, just 17 yards. Jeff Sykes also saw time in the backfield, backfield, seven carries, also 17 yards on the ground for the Lopers. Second down and 11. Randy Carlock is the fullback, and Terry wants to throw. Looking for Don Russell, we've got penalty flags. Play. A nice catch by the wideout, Don Ru or Doug Russell rather. But again, we've got penalty flags back at the line of scrimmage. Sean Francisco covering on the play. Jerome Watts over there too, uh, and I think that's where the flag is going to come from. I got holding on Carney. They'll bring it all back. There was a little bit of bumping and, and running uh, back here on the backside as you see Terry on the sprint out right, and again Watts over here. Yeah, we just won't see it. He bumped him pretty good before uh, before the camera come, uh, came into play there. Jerome Watts, number nine. He's again part of that California connection, Fresno, California. A number of players from Wayne State. A couple of assistant coaches have excellent connections in California. Play is going to go back. Nicest pass play of the day for UNK, and it's all for naught. There's Ken Terry. He finally was able to use that wideout, Doug Russell, who is moving himself up the receiving charts all time here at UNK. He's now in the top five, and that certainly would have helped his efforts. And Adrian, he's a player you mentioned in the first half as you a guy it. they need to get into the you offense. You've got to get him in the offense. I mean, this guy is a quality football player. He's done a great job uh, uh, for Carney this year. And you just got to get him into the offense. We really didn't hear anything at all from him in the first half. Instead of first and 10 at midfield, it's second down and 25. And Yuli tries to go off right tackle. He picked up a couple of good blocks and got it out near the 16 yard line. It'll be third down and a whole bunch for Terry and company. Here you see lead block. Great block in there. Who was that? 57? 67? Larry Cardenas. Great block up front. If that was indeed 67, Cardenas. Excellent trap block. Put the tackler right in the nickel seats, and Euler was able to pick up yardage. Third down and 21 from the 16. The center is Corey Williams. The guards, Cardenas and Bocoon, White Eagle and, and Peters are the tackles. Terry wants to throw over the middle. He's got his tight end, Don, or Dave Wattenpah. Jason McIntyre finally made the stop. It's back near the original line of scrimmage. Robert Mechanico also over there to make the hit on the receiver. But again, Bill, we talked about Russell, 17 catches this year for 168 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Here we'll see the play again to the tight end. Boom, there's Mechanico on the hit, and then the finish by McIntyre. Nice throw by Kenny Terry. But you... Jerry Garrett, the lone deep man to receive Casey Anderson's punt. It's an end-over-end -end kick that should take a UNK roll, and it does. And it goes out of bounds to the 25-yard line. So UNK has done a pretty good job in terms of special teams in keeping the ball away from Jerry Garrett, who leads the nation's in punt, the nation in punt returns. But special teams have already played a big part in this ball game in terms of kickoff returns for, UN, for, for Wayne State. They haven't done a good job of kicking away from the dangerous men there. 14 to three is our score with 12.36 remaining in the third quarter. Wilson Hookfin took the opening kickoff of the second half, 100 plus yards for a touchdown. And that's where the score stands. Now Brett Salisbury, with a little bit more breathing room on the scoreboard, takes over first and 10 at his own 25. Four receivers and Rainey in the pattern. This is Chamberlain on the reverse, picking his way through traffic out to the 30-yard line. Chris Washington, the linebacker, makes the stop. Byron Chamberlain, the junior from Fort Worth, Texas. He had a big first half receiving. Kind of a slow developing play one more time. Washington able to work off the block of number 68, Brian Thompson, and did a good job of getting off that block and making the hit, making the uh, the tackle, that is. 
A gain of four, second down and six. Salisbury to the air. He's got Damon Thomas complete for the first down at the 37-yard line. Washington covering on the play. It's a great catch by that young man right there to pick up that first down. The ball thrown a little bit down and to the outside. Watch this catch. He's going to come back with the hands to the outside. See right there. Good job. That's great hands. No question about it. Jonas Ginther, 17, was also there on the play defensively. Shot of Damon Thomas. That's his third, his third catch of the afternoon. Two catches for 10 yards in the first half. Rainey, the tailback, with the carry up the middle. Big yardage. Nice open field tackle by Matt Wibbles, the free safety, but not before Rainey picks up 12 yards, but we've got a penalty flag on the play. Flag thrown again back in the backfield. Looks like Wayne. That was Doug Martin on the call. Didn't pick up exactly what that call was. It was a holding call. Going to go back against Wayne. They'll march off about 15. But again, as we talked about in the first half, when Wayne runs that spread offense, as they do, four wide receivers out on routes. It opens up that middle. It spreads that defense. And then you get people like Rainey that are able to come up inside and pick up good yardage like that. And usually what that creates is a second and short situation. See it again right here. You saw everything spread out there. There's a, a conglomeration of one right there. Creates those one-on-one -on -one situations as you see Wibbles driving the shoulder. Good tackle by Matt Wibbles. First down and 20 now from the Wayne 27 yard line. Salisbury with all kinds of time finds Chamberlain and he's out of bounds near the original line of scrimmage. May have picked up 11. It'll be second down and nine penalties have been the Achilles heel of Wayne State this afternoon. Six penalties, 54 yards in the first half, and the holding penalty brings back another big gainer prior to this play. Chamberlain going to pick up his sixth catch on the afternoon. A crossing pattern came all the way from the left side, just ran out of the coverage, and able to pick it up. Second down at about eight. Thomas and Chamberlain split to the near side. Rainey the tailback. Garrett. And Santos, and this is Jerry Garrett at the 40, tries to dance his way for the first town, and he's close. He needs the 41. He's forced out by Washington at the 40. It'll be third down and short. Carney's defense so mindful of the passing game. They're giving uh, the Wayne State receivers a little bit of extra yardage here. They don't want to get beat deep, obviously, and they've got people that can go. Chamberlain can go. But again, that's why they're coming up so open here. Watch those two receivers at the top of your screen will run the coverage off. One of them is going to break it back and come back. That's Garrett on the on the catch. But again, he's absolutely wide open there. Again, those Carney backs mindful to keep those backs in front of them. But again, a little bit too much of a cushion. And they do measure along that far sideline. And it is just enough for the first down by the nose of the football. So first down and 10 from the Wayne State 45 yard line. Now trips to the near side. And they hand it off to Rainey. Hit immediately at the line of scrimmage by Mike Irwin, the defensive end from Newton, New Jersey, number 46. There's Rainey again. Rainey in the first half, eight carries, 66 yards. He scored the first touchdown of the day. Irwin came right down the line of scrimmage from the backside, made a nice hit. Everybody out this time, Bill. Five in the pattern, three to the near side. Salisbury underneath the Byron Chamberlain again. Chamberlain in that first half, five catches, 102 yards. Now that's his second of the second half. Butch Peltz finally made the tackle. He's going to run a short little hook here, run the coverage back, hook back into the middle, and then uh, take it to the inside, and that's just a great route. Garrett and Salisbury played together in junior college back at Palomar. And again, that's a, a big, big advantage for those two people. First and 10, 10 and a half to play.